So Almira, uh, as you know, I grew up in Armenia and you also have some Armenian roots and uh, chess in Armenia is just so big even as a child. Now, of course, they won so many Olympiads. Levon Aronian has been number two in the world for as long as I can remember until recently. And uh, can you tell us a little something about uh, your childhood? <laughs> yes, actually, I was born in Moldova, but uh, my mom is Armenian and she played uh, for the Armenian team. So I've spent a lot of summers and a lot of time in Armenia. And uh, what struck me most, even when I was a child, is um, that chess it is really a part of, uh, of a culture. So when you would go in the streets, everyone would play chess and the gammon. Well, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I I loved both. So that's well, I picked up the game with my parents. Of course, my mom uh, is a, is a women's grandmaster as well. So she played a lot of Olympics, um, and also she she's a chess teacher. So she dedicated her life to um, well teaching chess to kids, and that's actually how I grew up. You know, I was sitting there at the chess club, even though I really didn't know like what to do with those pieces, you know, they were absolutely magical to me. And then, for example, when I would go back to Armenia or Georgia, um, I would always play, you know, like some strange games. And then I would see people uh, on the streets, you know, uh, playing against each other. And then, like I said, OK, I want to do this myself. Yeah, the way I learned chess was accidentally. I was at my dad's fourth place and he was cleaning his desk and I saw the small chess set. So I just asked him, what is this? And he told me, oh, it's a chess game. It's, it's a game. And then he thought the best way for me to learn is to watch him play with his friends. So I just learned by watching him play. But uh, it was so easy for me to get into the ch you know, he, um Soon after, I went to coaching and of course started playing. I learned when I was eight, started playing in tournaments when I was nine, won the Armenian Youth Championship and then qualified for World Youth. And uh, it just took, for me, the culture in Armenia is so different because, as you said, like everyone plays chess. It's so hard <laughs> to find, you know, a family where someone doesn't play chess. And I also feel the big difference is um, the main emphasis is to become a strong chess player, not uh, not to just learn chess to have, you know, to have fun or do some activity. Maybe it has changed now because they have chess in the schools. Armenia is the only country that has chess in the schools as a subject. But uh, for me, growing up, chess was uh, almost like a job. Of course, and I can understand that, especially with such a historical figure like Tigran Petrosyan. Actually, my mom played in a team with him. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so that was also very inspiring for me. And if we uh, talk about, for example, chess in Caucasus, we can talk about uh, Georgian chess school. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, such historical uh, figures like Nona Gaprindashvili and Maya Chibordanidze, they have contributed so much, actually, to inspire the whole generation. Sometimes I think that it's just a matter of chance that they had such a champion like uh, Nona Gaprindashvili and then uh, a plethora of chess players and chess champions came out of it like Maichi Burdanidze and Anna Iselianin. Uh, uh, then uh, who was this uh, Nino Gurieli and uh, so many others. So Nana Alexandre, they've played so many matches as well. Um, and as we know, uh, Georgian chess school is still very strong and uh, Nana Jagnidze is playing this tournament so uh, she will defend you know uh, the honor uh, yes the honor <laughs> of, of our region <laughs> of uh, our chess history yeah it's, it's amazing that as you said the tradition continues and they have so many grandmasters who are women Hotenashvili, Jagnidze, Batyashvili and I, I believe their entire team is just grandmasters and they correct me if I'm wrong they won third place in the Olympiad last year yes and also uh, when I had a look at the lineup of this tournament, you know, almost all of the players are having grandmaster title. Only, uh, like, I think one player, uh, she will actually have a chance to, to, uh, to make a norm in this tournament. Oh, in this yes. tournament yeah, this tournament is very impressive. But uh, going back to where we came from, so what would you say is the difference between chess in Armenia and maybe chess mm -hmm. in Moldova? Well, the main difference, huh, that's a, it's a very interesting question because uh, as a kid, uh, I really didn't see it because there was also uh, such a passion for chess because at that time it, it was, of course, part of the Soviet Union and of the general, uh, chess was a general element of our culture. So uh, Soviet culture and which worshipped chess, actually. So there was so much respect. So basically, like, 
I was playing chess in Armenia, in Moldova, all over the Soviet Union, and uh, actually as a kid it brought me a lot of joy. Yeah, but I also feel like that um, when I was growing up and I still lived in Armenia, chess mm -hmm. didn't have the same kind of support it does now. Uh, we didn't have, the federation didn't pay for anything. If we qualified to World Youth, like it, it was on each parent to find some kind of money to send their kids right. um, to these international championships. I remember in my first World Youth when we went to France, we had like four people on our team and like I was the only girl because the others couldn't find any money. And we had one coach and, and then I think we were renting an apartment and everyone was staying together. And this is one of my big differences when I came to the US. There were like so many culture shocks for me, but when I played in World Youth, like each kid had a parent and it was this like journey to go and represent your country. And for us, it was, you know, whoever could find any kind of money to send their kids, then that's what they did. <laughs> well, it reminds me of this uh, a proverb like per aspira ad astra and also as even if the road is difficult, you are aiming for the stars. So uh, I think that uh, we lived through the same period and it was actually very difficult because uh, our countries were undergoing uh, uh, through such, well, such dramatic changes. But uh, I think that no matter what, you like, we all kept uh, our love for chess and the motivation actually to to participate in all of these tournaments because I think there's this um, uh, I don't there's something in, inside us that uh, forces us to go on you know this uh, and I think that's part of also of our culture the human spirit that keeps you going yes. yeah I mean chess uh, in Armenia has actually improved so much right now they got so much uh, government sponsorships and um, we had the chess house, the Tigran Pelosan house, of course, with the school, and they also got funding for a chess academy so where the talented kids would go to. Now they have chess in the schools, and I've actually looked at those books. They, they look really challenging, and I talked to Sambad Laputian about it. He's one of the founders, mm -hmm. the founder, and he said that the main point is to introduce logic and critical thinking to children. Like The point of it is not to create strong players, which is a little different from how I grew up. But uh, now they're just introducing chess to everyone. So maybe the next generation, everyone in Armenia is going to be playing chess. Well, actually, I, I agree with this point of view because chess develops not only logical reasoning, but critical thinking also um, to consider every situation as unique. I think it's very important to be able to analyze things. And uh, I think it's, it only well makes us stronger and a better as individuals, so like we hopefully chess will be taught in schools uh, soon, like everywhere. I hope so if if it will be taken. But uh, uh, the same uh, kind of initiative has been taken, uh, up in, like in France. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of schools, and even sometimes the universities, which have chess as a subject, and you can even take it uh, uh, for like as a subject for baccalaureate. So I think uh, it's a very interesting approach. Yeah, there are some schools in the U.S. who also do that, but I think to do it in the U.S. as a country, maybe state by state would be mm -hmm. more reasonable or district by district because, you know, there's so many schools. But uh, growing up in this chess culture, what was it like for you when you moved to France? Well, <laughs> at some point uh, it was not easy because when you are moving to another country, you have to... Um, assimilate with another culture and also learn a new language. But um, what struck me the most is like, well, chess is chess everywhere. So uh, I was not alone. So I was uh, s surrounded by friends. So uh, French players are actually very passionate. So they, I think they chess, uh, I don't even know, like they feel the void, you know. So I've never felt uh, that it was different. Yeah, and I think I had a similar thing because when I moved to the U.S., I was 13, so that was a very difficult age because I was a teenager and, you know, that's uh, such a hard age to make such a big transition. But also, I also had chess, so at least if I couldn't speak English, I couldn't do anything, at least I had chess and that really helped me through that period.